isopods, they're the next big thing in the reptile hobby. As we change more and more into bioactive and plaintive vivarium setups, the need for isopods rises each more each day. While these guys are becoming more and more sought after trying to get the perfect bioactive vivarium for our reptiles, the questions come with that as well. That being, how do I care for these guys? How do I breed them? How do I make sure that my isopods are happy and healthy to make my enclosure happy and healthy to then inevitably make my reptile happy and healthy. It's a good thing that's exactly what we are going to be going over today. Your boy got some new isopods, so I'm going to be showing them off and showing exactly what I'm going to do to care for these guys, breed them, and inevitably being able to sell them while I have amazing cultures going in my projects. So stick around, we are going to be showing off some cute isopods, giving some great information, and of course, subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you around. Let's get into it. Kicking off this video, we're gonna be starting with step one, and that's going to be the materials you're gonna to need to make sure your isopod is happy and healthy. This is probably the point in the video where I will give a quick disclaimer alert. This is not going into the specific care of each isopod species. This is just going to be a general thing of what you need, kind of like a newbie beginner guide on how to set up isopods. Some isopods require some other things, while others require less of other things. Make sure you know exactly which species you have, and then tweak this guide a little bit for fit that specific species. Now that your boy can't get in trouble when someone inevitably destroys their isopods because they didn't listen to that disclaimer, we can finally get into the video. Now the first thing you're gonna need, boys and girls, is the house for your isopod. Can't have these boys free roaming, not only would that be impossible to do in this building because for the fact that this is a 30 by 20 square foot building and the isopods are this big, but we also need to make sure that the care requirements are good and their husbandry is being provided, which is why I love using these bad boys. Now this right here in the industry, it's a bit of a slang word we use in the hobby. This is what we call tubs. Other people call them bins, but don't listen to those people that are wrong. This is what you call a tub or box. Definitely not a bin. Hey, stop messing with my white balance. We're gonna drop that so that my camera starts getting dark. Right here is what you call the shoebox box, shoebox bin. Boys, you can get at Walmart. I think I picked up all of these for like eight bucks or something. It's a very good deal, very cheap for isopods. You do not need an entire PVC or glass vivarium to breed your guys. This will definitely do the job. Unlike some other guys, we've gone over with tubs where you need to drill some holes, drill some ventilation. With isopods, you don't. The majority of the time, isopods love humidity and you're gonna want to keep a nice, kind of sleeve tight uh, ventilation for your isopods. Lucky for you, when you close this box, it gives just enough ventilation. This is not airtight skills, so no oxygen is coming in, but it is enough to the point where the isopods are going to love what you put in this home. It's going to keep some great humidity. Moving on to the next step, you guys are going to want to know it's going to be what kind of substrate to put in this bin. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dakota, isopods are just bugs. I don't really care what I got to do. I'm just going to put some cocoa fiber in here and call it a day. And while, sir, you are wrong on two fronts, isopods are not bugs. They're shrimps. I think. Also, the fact cocoa powder, cocoa dust, whatever you want to call it, is the worst thing used for my supplies, and you actually need to get kind of good for the substrate mix if you want your guys to thrive and breed right. This thing over here, I got this great mix over by my good friend Kenny over at Dirt Daddy. This is not a sponsored post. I actually paid for all of this. I got a lot of stuff. There's like $100 worth of stuff over here that I paid with Kenny. I absolutely love Dirt Daddy, dude. I had a great time talking with him over at Flora Fauna. Go check him out. Again, not sponsored. I just dig the guy and what he does. He has cool stuff. Uh, I'll link some of the stuff down in the description for you guys to check out. Right now we are working with four different isopod species. So for that, I wanted to fill about four tubs. So I got two of these little Dirt Daddy wet dirt mixes. And then I got some of the ISO, ISO Love Bag. This is all the stuff you're gonna need. So it's got a little bit of dirt, sphagnum moss, some dried out leaves, uh, some dead wood, and then a cuddle bone that I'm gonna break up to four different parts and put them into each enclosure. Absolutely awesome. Uh, all of this stuff to fill four bins, it's like, what is that, 12, 20, 4, 15. That's like 40 bucks or something. I don't know. I don't do math right, but very cheap. Go check it out. Now, while this has most of the stuff you're going to need, that being the dried leaves, the moss to keep that humidity, the dead wood that the isopods are going to munch on, there is one more thing I like to add, and that is going to be some extra food to make sure that they're getting everything they need. In terms of food for isopods, there is a giant variety of stuff you can do. Pretty much, you want to put whatever is in there that's pretty much going to mold a little bit, and the isopods will love to munch on that mold and eat it. Uh, they're kind of gross things. They're they're like the ground shrimp. They're land shrimps, and shrimps are gross. You ever figure out what shrimps eat? Could you leave it in the comments? I actually don't know what shrimps eat. For me, I went with a little bit of a fish root just because I don't have anything on hand. So I just went to Walmart real quick. Uh, we got some plants, some algae pellets. We got cichlid pellets and I got good old goldfish flakes. There's a number of other things you can use. You even use like leftover crested gecko food that your crested geckos don't eat. 
I, I guess assuming that you own crested geckos like me, and you can put that in there. However, there is a little bit of a like, uh, I, I guess, warning as you will. Uh, the problem is with that, I did find, or I actually was told that because crested gecko food is a little bit sweeter, it's gonna attract soil mites, those annoying like tiny little bugs, which isn't a detriment to your isobot colony, but it is kind of annoying, so just keep that in mind. On down the road, I will be using Rapashi's morning wood. God, I hope that's right, not some weird induendo. Uh, I will be using that stuff, uh, just I got it shipped over here, so this is gonna take a little bit, and I need these guys in enclosures now, so we're gonna go with this for right now. But that morning wood is gonna be the one we're gonna be using going forward. We got it, boys and girls, how to do everything you need to know, how to care for isopods in like five seconds, or I guess all the stuff you need. Now I'm gonna mix all this bad boy up, we'll be showcasing some isopods, you guys get to see IRL in real time, I guess not in real life, because, I, what is that, IRT? God. Setting this up and showing you exactly how it should look like for your isopods, and we'll be showcasing and putting them in, it'll be good stuff, let's get into it. We censor those, those feet editing, Dakota, that's not for free, people need to pay to be able to see those piggies. Now that you can't see my face, but you can see what I was doing, it's gonna be easy as one, two, three. Pretty much what we are gonna be doing is dumping the wet dirt and the ISO love bag to create one nice big substrate mix. And then at that point, we'll be separating it into four separate shoebox bins so all of our isopods can get the same thing and be happy. Oh my God, why is it, why am I just rip the So I'm actually going to be separating some of the wood so we can evenly distribute it, but all the leaves and stuff we can just mix into one big thing. Where's that cuddle bone? I need that. Alrighty, boys and girls, we got our nice substrate mix in. Next step is going to be filling each of these bins so we know that each and every one of this isospot species has exactly what it wants and it needs in order to be happy and healthy. Yeah, Dakota, just do this on the carpeted area. You've got a 30 by 20 square foot building and yet you're deciding to put all the dirt in the carpet that you're never really gonna have to clean. Absolutely fantastic. Good job, sir. Alrighty boys and girls, now we have all of our setups finished and they're looking absolutely fantastic. The next step is going to be actually adding your isopods into these tubs. Like I mentioned earlier, personally, we got four different ones to go off of. Now, right now we are working with the orange scabers. We've got dairy cows, we've got zebras, and then we got dwarf white. We also have some iso or uh, some springtails that we're doing, but they require a little bit of different stuff, so they weren't included in this video absolutely fantastic. Now, if you guys are actually OG followers of the channel, you'll know that we used to work with isopods years back. However, I ended up destroying my colonies because I forgot about them and they died. And after spending $300 on isopods, I decided to cut it. However, after speaking to Kenny and seeing what he did over at Flora Fauna, you know, I really just got the passion for it again. I decided, you know what? Let's do it. I'm already here. Let's drop some bucks, get some isopods, and start making colonies over again. All right, nothing less to do now but to open these tiny little deli cups and put them in big, big more cups and see how they like their new home.
There you got it, boys and girls, how to set up your isopods to make sure they're happy and healthy and breeding for you and all that other good stuff that I mentioned a couple minutes earlier when we started this video. As always, boys and girls, if you enjoy the content and myself as a content creator, consider supporting us over on Patreon. Starts as low as $1 a month. It's a great place to be. You get all behind the scenes stuff. Link is going to be right down there, down in the description. And of course, thank you for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I'll see you guys next time. But until then, goodbye.